Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of At Home With Dan. Uh, today I'm actually not going to be doing any cooking on this episode, so a bit different to normal. Um, so I've been in this industry, in the catering industry, for, for going on 20 years. Um, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about chef's knives today or kitchen knives. There's such a wide array of different knives out there. Uh, there's so many different choices, so many different price points. Um, and to be fair, all knives, chef knives are generally good knives, but you do get different variations, different styles and standards. So I just wanted to talk through a few different ones today. I've got a little selection on my, uh, on my butcher's block here. As you can see, I've got a few different varieties. And these are all knives that I've basically used throughout my career, I've accumulated, I've, I've got, this is just a small selection of what I actually have in terms of knifeware. So basically, just to run through a couple of different knives at the minute, this is what's called a cook's knife or a chef's knife. Generally comes in a variation of sizes, so this has an eight inch blade on it, so this is kind of a medium sized cook's knife. You can get slightly smaller ones and you can get bigger ones. Actually, this is the 10 inch version of that knife, but just with a wooden handle. So they, again, different variations. These are both the same make, so these are both Victorinox or Vitronox, however you want to pronounce it. One's got a rosewood handle, one's got the, the molded handle. Um, and they're both cook knives, one's an eight inch, one's a 10 inch. Personally, I actually prefer the rosewood handle. It has a much nicer feel in the hand. Um, so that's a cook's knife. This little one here is what's called a tomato knife. Um, you can tell by the little serrates in it. It's a fantastic, like a fantastic versatile knife. Don't just have to use it for tomatoes. I use it to cut up a lot of my veg and things like that. Uh, carrots, onions, garlic. Um, Another one we've got is a, a boning knife. So this is generally used in meat and fish prep. This one is what's called a stiff boning knife. So it, it doesn't really have any bend or flexibility in it. But actually this one does have a tiny bit, but not a lot. Another variation of a boning knife is this one here. Uh, again, these are both Victorian Ox. This one is quite a solid piece of steel. Um, so they both do an equally good job. They're both slightly different designs. Um, and I think when it comes to knives, a lot of it is just down to personal preference. Um, and again, my personal preference just for, for feel and, and how it is in, in my hand in use is the rosewood handle one. I also have quite a big serrated carving knife here. Um, and I know it looks, it looks a little bit out of place and it's, it's quite a long blade and everything. But this is probably my most used knife. I, I tend to use this for, for a lot of things. Um, everything from carving meat to dicing onions to cutting bread, cutting cakes, pastry section, the, the whole shebang. Um, and I'm a firm believer and a lot of experts and a lot of people will disagree with me on this, but a lot, a lot of other people say that every knife has its own job and there's so many different knives. Just Victorian Ox alone will probably make 300 different knives, different styles, different sizes. I tend to disagree with that just ever so slightly. I personally think if you're comfortable with a knife that's in your hand, you can use that for almost any job. Don't get me wrong, I wouldn't go and use this to maybe turn a potato um, I wouldn't use this to chop herbs, I'd use a chopping knife. There are certain jobs that certain knives can't do. But I find this to be a very versatile knife and I can use it for a lot of things and I feel comfortable using it. So maybe sometimes I'd use this knife over a, a cook's knife just because I feel more comfortable in, in the use and holding it. And actually out of all the knives on the board and the different shapes and sizes, when it comes to working in a professional kitchen, this little pile here, so I've got a tomato knife, a bone and knife, a cook's knife, a serrated knife, and then I've just got the sharpening steel as well, which I'll show you how to use in a second. Those five pieces are all I need to work in a professional kitchen on a daily basis. So that, for me, you don't need any more than that in your household kitchen either, to be fair. I think if I can use those in a professional kitchen and do every job I need to do, you guys can get away with it. So when you see all these sets that are 13, 14, 15 piece sets, the likelihood is you probably is never going to use 10 pieces of that set. So I would recommend that you go for a slightly smaller set, but maybe pay a little bit more money. Um, so in terms of branding and things like that and different ones we go for, like I've just said, we've got the molded uh, Victorian Ox knives. I've also got 
a couple of rosewood handle Victorian X knives. So it's the same brand, just a different a different design. We then go on to this one, which is called Global. Global is quite a world-renowned knife. They are a very lovely knife. They are very sharp. Um, I used to have a lot of Globals and I used to love Globals. The one thing that kind of started putting me off was after a lot of use, they started being quite painful to hold. They've got a very, a very kind of hard metal top, which is quite, it doesn't seem to have a great deal of protection for your hand. That might be completely fine if you're just in the household kitchen and you're only using it for 10 minutes at a time, but when you're in a kitchen, you're using it for eight hours a day, 10 hours a day. It used to, it used to become quite painful after a while. So I actually ended up selling quite a lot of my Globals. Um, I kept two or three, which I really enjoyed using. So I, I'm really big into my sushi. So I've got a Global Trashini knife, which I absolutely love. Uh, it is razor sharp. So that's Global, Victorian Ox. This one, Almost looks like it's ruined, but this is a completely different steel. So this is a this is actually like a carbonated steel, so it's not stainless steel. So when you do use it, it, it discolors. This is a Wustoff, um, and this was made around, I think it was their 200 year anniversary. It's an absolutely lovely knife, really perfectly balanced, beautiful handle. Um, and unfortunately, I don't use it that much because it's, because it's a carbonated steel. A lot of the things that you use it on, it actually oxidizes the steel. So if you chop an onion or chop a tomato or anything like that, it starts to oxidize the steel and you can actually taste the metallic flavor in your food. So it looks beautiful. It's not necessarily that usable. The other worst off thing I've got is what we call a gazunda or a fish slice. This was one of the first pieces of equipment I got when I started college and I started college back in 98. And you can see the handle snap but just hanging on there. It's been melted front and back. It's been through the wars, but this is this is old now. This is really old. And it's one piece of kit that I absolutely love. You'll see a lot of chefs walk around with them in their back pocket. Not necessarily hygienic, but it's what they do. And then another knife I've got, which is a Japanese brand called Mac. This was an amazing knife. It was a beautiful knife. I loved using it, really well balanced, so sharp. But for my own sins, I use a, what's called a diamond steel. And this is a diamond steel. So you get different types of steels. You can see you just get the normal metal steels, which are the round ones and they've got the thin lines. You can get wet stones, you can get different sharpening tools. For my sins, I use a diamond steel. And on certain metals and certain knives, a diamond steel is actually just a little bit too aggressive. And if you use it a lot, and as a professional chef, we tend to sharpen our knives before and after each use, so you can imagine they get a lot of sharpening. Um, I don't know if you can see that on the camera there, but actually the blade is kind of worn away in a really weird kind of arched, like horseshoed up. So when I go to chop something, say I'm chopping a herb, all of the blade doesn't actually touch the chopping board because I've actually worn away at the blade. I've been meaning for years to get this taken to a specialist knife sharpener and see if they can get it back into the beautiful kind of rolling shape for me. Um, so that's a Mac knife, beautiful knife, but a knife like this, you probably, you're looking quite expensive. So what I'll do is I'll just quickly kind of give you off the top of my head a rough idea of cost wise. Victorian Ox, fantastic entry level knives. Um, great for a beginning chef, great for somebody who just wants a good chef's knife in the kitchen. Basically, for something along the lines of this, we're probably talking about 26 to 30 pound for a cook's knife. Uh, for the small tomato knife, you're probably talking about a fiver, so that's not too bad. The rosewood versions are just a little bit more expensive, so for the rosewood version of the cook's knife, you're probably looking more towards 35, 36, so it's not too much more expensive. Global can be very expensive. They do certain different ones, so you can get ones that have hollow handles, or you can get the drop forge ones, which are like fully forged, full metal. This is a drop forge one. This retails at around about 140, 150. This Wustoff one, um, I, I kind of got this at a special price. I think I paid 60 pounds for that. Um, but as I said, I don't really use it that much. It's more of an ornament. And then the Mac, which probably is my favorite knife, you probably is looking for a top of the range Mac like this. You're probably is looking towards 160 to 200, depending on where you get it from. However, a really good knife is a brilliant investment. Um, I'd recommend a good knife to everybody, even if you buy it every one every year for a couple of years, or you get a friend or family member to pitch in for your birthday. For example, if you for me, 
if you were to get maybe three Mac knives in different styles and shapes and sizes, you're, you're talking years worth of knives. Some of these knives I've had for going on 15, 16 years and they're still going strong. Um, so that's a bit about the knives and cost and prices and things like that. There's plenty of places you can get them from. Probably just do a, 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 a search engine of, of chef knives. Um, with regards to sharpening them, there's a couple of different ways you can do. You use wet ones, you can use these pull through sharpeners. I tend to use a steel. And basically when you do buy a steel, make sure it has the guard on here because the last thing you want to do is slip down and crit your fingers. So the guard's there to stop the knife. And we hold it on a 45 degree angle and you hold the knife on a 25 degree angle, like so. And basically from heel to toe, just gradually, slowly pull it down. And then same on the other side. And you just slowly go from heel to toe, down the length of the steel. And if your knife is already sharp, if you do this maybe four times, if you do that four times before you use it, and then do it for another four times after you use it, the blade will keep an edge, it will stay sharp. If you lose an edge, it's a bit harder to, to get it sharp again, and you just gotta work at it a bit longer. This sounds weird, but always get the same person to sharpen the knife. Different people sharpen knives different ways, so even if you know you've gotta go on a 45 degree angle and 25 degree angle, somebody, I'm left-handed, so somebody right-handed might do it completely differently. Um, a family member of mine might do it at a bit more of an angle because they're not quite sure what 20 degrees is. So when somebody's sharpening a knife, try and get the same person to sharpen it all the time. Another way you can do it, if you don't feel comfortable doing it that way because it's coming down towards you, what you can do is put it onto a bench. Ideally, put a tea towel underneath so it doesn't slip anywhere. Just hold it in place and just do the same principle, just from heel to toe. But it just means you're in control, you're not gonna you're not gonna miss and hit your hand. That's a good way of practicing. And just do a little little and off and keep your knife sharp. So that's a fantastic way. And as I say, that's a diamond steel, you can get different steels, but they tend to just sharpen things a bit faster, um, but they do wear away quite a bit of the knife. So everybody, that's my little bit on kitchen knives. Um, if anybody has any questions, please contact me on either YouTube or, or social media. Uh, if anybody wants any recommendations of where you can maybe buy a knife or any particular knife for a particular job. Um, but to be honest, if you're just starting out, if you just want to get a feel for a chef's knife, maybe just go for a kind of basic range like a Victorian Ox or something along the lines of it. Just get two or three knives see how you go and there's so many knives out there within the range that you can just add to and add to as you go uh, so that's my tutorial on chest knives and kitchen knives for today thank you very much for watching guys take care and stay safe cheers bye